We are at the, uh, excuse me, September 28th, and it's Monday, 2020, Village Board of Trustees regular meeting, okay? Um, due to the COVID-19 emergency, this meeting will be primarily uh, virtually a virtual meeting as required by law. At least one representative from the village will be present at Village Hall, and they uh, can accommodate uh, 13 people, including um, those people of the staff who are there. Um, we recommend the online or Lake Club virtual meeting. Okay, with that, uh, may I have a call to order, please? Trustee Ankman. Here. Trustee Charla. Here. Trustee Dewart. Here. Trustee Markey. Here. Trustee Meyer. Here. Trustee Cole. Here. Uh, may we have the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of Allegiance flag. flag. The United States, States of America. America. To the Republic for which it stands. One nation, one nation under, God. under God. God. And do see both with liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Tonight uh, we have a proclamation. It is the uh, uh, designating October 2020th Aspire Prudential Month. Um, Whereas in 2019, the U.S. Fire Department responded to 1,291,500 fires or one fire every 24 seconds. And whereas nationwide, there were 3,704 fire deaths or one every 190 minutes. Whereas property loss resulting from fire during the same period totaled in excess of $14.8 billion. Whereas an enlightened and supportive citizenry can be effective in reducing both loss of life and property damage resulting from fire. Whereas the village of Lake Bluff is committed to protecting its citizens from fire losses. And whereas the village of Lake Bluff is served by an all volunteer fire department, which worked with its residents to promote fire safety. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the village president and board of trustees of the village of Lake Bluff County of Lake and State of Illinois that we hereby proclaim October 2020 Fire Prevention Month in the Village of Lake Bluff. Village of Lake Bluff residents are encouraged to change the batteries in their home smoke detectors, form a fire escape plan for their home, and participate in continuing information and educational activities of the Lake Bluff Fire Department during Fire Prevention Month and throughout the year, and to practice fire safety and prevention on a continuing basis. Um, certainly in lieu of everything that's going on out west, with the fires and things, it just makes us all more prevalent for us. All right, we're now moving on to consideration of the minutes of the September 14, 2014 Village Board meeting. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Okay, that was by Ms. Ankerman. And do I have a second, please? Second. Uh, second by Ms. Marquis. Any corrections? Madam President, there was one, I had a conversation earlier today with Trustee Charlotte. There was a one change in uh, number eight, item eight, where there was a verb tense agreement issue there, um, a, a typo that minor correction. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Are there any other? Hearing none, roll call, please. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Charlotte. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Marquis. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Uh, uh, Madam President, we need a vote on the fire prevention. Oh, I'm sorry, I did. I, I missed that. So no, that was not doing that. Please, do I have a motion for the Peruvian proclamation? So moved. So moved by Mr. Toll. Do I have a second? Second. second. By Mr. Charlot. Mr. Uh, Myers, actually. Oh, Mr. Myers, I'm sorry. Uh, could we have a roll call for that? Trustee Charlot. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Marquis. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Okay, thank you. At this point in time, uh, the village president, board of trustees, allocates 15 minutes uh, during this time for individuals who would like the opportunity 
to address the village board on any item that is not on tonight's agenda. Do we have anyone that would like to speak this evening? Madam President, um, I'm not certain if there's anybody looking to speak to anything not on the agenda on, uh, through the Zoom call, but we have two residents here in Village Hall who have um, comments they'd like to make. All right, fine. Thank you. I'm Maureen Brebner, and I live at 436 West Witchwood Lane on Lake Bluff. And years ago, I went door to door with my husband's paralegal uh, to get signatures for Mr. Litzinger, who wanted the property there to the south of us remaining as, uh, e, I think it was R1 zoning, which would be a state zoning. And it was brought all those petitions and Mr. Listenser's attorney, as well as the group surrounding the area uh, on Green Bay Road and West Witchwood, uh, got the signatures that were brought to the board. And the board president at that time overruled, uh, it was five to four, I guess it was, against having it remain a state zoning, which is why we bought our house in that area and also the fact that to let the first developer take the property and have it with duplexes. And then it was sold again. And basically, again, it went to another person that indicated that they were putting 98 homes into that development and taking out the addition for, Stone, for Harrison Conference Center, eliminating the pool, and the density was greater than the sanctuary because the total land mass included the 98 duplexes that they were going to put in versus with the whole area versus the buildable acreage. They did all the building, the zoning, everything else as far as the access to it off of Sunset, which is directly uh, east of our street. And all those signatures, 2,500 signatures, and the village board president made it five to four and overruled it. And then it went to this developer. And now he was supposed to go ahead and make the Harrison Conference Center, which is a landmark development, basically into condos. We didn't know until recently that the furnace was taken out. I mean, this is a historic building, and he has not fulfilled the covenants of what he said he was going to do and got that property at a steal because of the housing market collapsing under the 2008 development under the prior administration. So to not look at this person who is the developer, not making sure that he does his due diligence as due, due diligence as he said he was going to do is to me an abomination of this village board if they don't hold him to that. Otherwise, take the property back and make it a historic development and a museum as it was not was it supposed to be. All right, thank you. Thank you. Is there someone else that wishes to speak? You, sir? No, no. no. That, that concludes those uh, persons at Village Hall, President O'Hara. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, at this point, um, we can change the order of the uh, meet, uh, meeting, and unless I hear uh, from a board member, I think we'll just keep with the regular agenda for this evening. Okay, so going to that, with that, uh, we have um, the warrant report for September 15th uh, through the 28th. We have expenditures of village funds for payments of invoices in the amount of $124,677.77 for September 15th through 24. We have also expenditures of village funds for payment of payroll for the amount of $297,097.92 for August 2020, which will bring total expenditures to $421,745.69. Do I have a motion to approve the warrant report? So moved. Second. Second. And uh, second by Mr. Charlot. Uh, any questions and comments uh, are, uh, to our finance director or administration regarding this for the trustees? All right.
right. Hearing none, roll call, please. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Marquis. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankman. Aye. Trustee Sherlaw. Aye. <clears throat> All right, uh, the next on the agenda is the August 2020 financial report. Uh, do I have a motion to accept this report? So moved. Uh, so moved by Ms. Marquis. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second by Mr. Toll. I would ask the finance director to give a summary of uh, the financial situation for this fall. Sure. Good evening. Um, so sales tax revenues received in fiscal year 21 May through August of $918,062 are $267,505 or 22.6% less than fiscal year 20 receipts. And this comparison is on a cash basis from year to year. Uh, building permit revenue for fiscal year 21 May through August is $106,170. $25,875 less than the same reporting period last fiscal year. General fund revenues are $3,932,424 or $338,701 less than fiscal year 20 May through August revenues. The largest dec declines are in sales and home rule tax, $226,370. Permits and licenses, uh, $66,819, and interest earnings of $30,278. And these differences are on an accrual based comparison from year to year. Fiscal year 21 current expenditures are consistent with or less than budgeted. The May through August expenditures of $2,918,668 are $163,274 less than the expenditures for the same period in fiscal year 20. Uh, the CARES Act reimbursement allocations from the county have increased to $234,000. Um, which includes public safety payroll expenses. This additional revenue will be received in calendar year 20. The original memo said fiscal year 20, that will be corrected. Um, this will help offset the general fund revenue losses. Uh, to address the financial uncertainty of, COVID, of the COVID-19 pandemic, the village adopted a budget that incorporated numerous reductions in revenues and expenditures. And to summarize, sales and income tax expectations were reduced by $749,356, a freeze of $180,000 in general fund transfers to the vehicle replacement funds was enacted, a reversal of $410,000 in interfund transfers was approved, and expenses were reduced in the general fund by $639,600, operational and capital improvements and transfers from the general fund were decreased, decreased by 630,000. Thank you, Bettina. Uh, any uh, comments, questions from the trustees? Hearing none, roll call, please. Trustee Markey. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Sherla. Aye. Trustee Dewart. I thank you uh, village administrator to report uh, thank you madam president i do have a brief report um i i just wanted to do a brief update to the village board i, I think some of you have been contacted by certain residents um i had received a few phone calls and some emails regarding some uh, ribbons that were placed on trees along east prospect avenue um and that relates to a commonwealth edison um, project that's been going on for some several months um, they are doing um, they call it reliability improvements where they're improving their infrastructure um, we had issued a permit back in April and um, they kind of swung around the corner and started to move um, westerly up East Prospect as part of the same project and um, came to the village and advised, and asked us if they could remove um, several trees, I think up to 13 trees as part of this project, was, which is uh, distinctly different than what they had included in their original application material. So we've actually issued them under our uh, codes a notice of suspension as well as a stop work order. 
um, that will certainly pause the project and give us a chance to sit down and meet with them and try to get our arms around what they're really trying to accomplish. I think it's a bit of a, um, a recent um, frustration with ComEd providing or submitting application materials and perhaps then not being complete or, or, or completely um, accurate in the extent of the scope of the work. So that's part of our frustration and why we stop work on this. And we'll try to get our arms around it and meet with them. And, and, and what I suspect will occur is um, we'll sit down with them. We may go out in the field and look at the trees that they're looking to remove um, and see how that relates to the scope of work. And if, if there's trees that should come out due to either disease um, or a substantial, substantial uh, dead limbs or other reasons, then we'll, we'll try to be um, uh, smart about that. But really, um, we are certainly um, doing our best to save our um, beautifully tree-lined streets here. Um, and, and that's our primary goal. So, um, and that and obviously ensuring safety along the, the streets. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer any. I'm really happy you are taking those steps through for saving our city and their tree, our trees. Thank you. Okay. Yes. All right. Anything else, Drew? Uh, no, ma'am. I assume you guys are going to mention the dogs. I, I, I'm saddened that we're, I'm going to lose the view and all the people that have gathered on uh, village property and uh, right out in front of Village Hall as well as in our central business district and other places. The, that, that project has been remarkable and has been uh, a, a great, I would say, a public art project for the community, and it's sad that it's not permanent. Yes, that's that's true. Uh, but they're beautiful dogs. We'd like them to, to stay there, but um, they will be going to their forever homes. I guess I would request them to sit and stay. Is what I'd say to them. <laughs> now would you do that? Well, they are going to their forever homes. Uh, yeah. There have been um, at least a dozen, I believe, uh, of those uh, dogs that have been uh, volunteered to be auctioned off to new owners. Uh, and generous, somebody generously donated uh, to the Lake Bluff History Museum. Uh, that is a rare, very robust auction. If anyone has looked at it and you still have a chance uh, to bid, everything, uh, the last time I looked, uh, everything had been bid upon and some at uh, very high prices, uh, but they're beautiful things. It's beautiful and um, we will look to see uh, what other projects we might be able uh, to entice our village with. All right, a village attorney's report. I have nothing to report tonight other than we loved having a dog as part of Lake Bluff this year. <laughs> we thank you for your participation. Thank you. We, we truly, truly did. Uh, and um, maybe we'll we should here. we should we should note that Mrs. Ankenman was the artiste or the village the village dog. Our, our, our name trustee. 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 Trustee Ankerman. Very cute Mrs. dog Ankerman. it is. Right. Thank you for the and shout can, out. Can I, can I just add too that uh, the auction goes through September 30th yes, at 9 p.m. 9 so p.m. So 9 p.m.? Okay. 9 p.m. on September 30th, you can access the auction site through the Lake Bluff 125 website. Thanks, Joyce. Sure. Okay, so uh, village uh, president's report. I'm going to ask again for an extension of the village president's declaration of civil emergency, which first began uh, at a uh, village board meeting, uh, excuse me, on March 18th, and subsequent, subsequently at every other board meeting has been renewed. Uh, so I'm asking that that would be uh, renewed again and would uh, uh, consider, if you please, a motion to extend that declaration. So, so moved. Uh, so second to okay. extend it. Thank you. So moved by Mr. Meyer. Second by, uh, was that Mr. Sh was that second? Mr. Charlo? Uh, Trustee Mark, you have you? Oh, I'm Trustee I'm sorry. Okay. It Thank you. It extension, is, extension is to the next board meeting. Okay. Yes, that is right. So extend it to the next board meeting. So who was the second? I'm sorry. Uh, Meyer was the second, Barber was the first. The and I apologize. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, all right, uh, could we have a roll call, please? Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. 
Aye. Trustee Aikman. Trustee Charlo. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Markey. Aye. Uh, at this point, we have the acceptance of the correspondence that all correspondence was delivered to the Village Board of Trustees as an informational report of September 11th and 18th. Do I have a motion to accept our correspondence? So moved. So moved by Mr. Dewart. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second by Ms. Marquis. Uh, questions, comments? Roll call, please. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Charlo. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Marquis. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Next item on the agenda is a resolution approving a license agreement for the use of village property for the construction of block stabilization improvements. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by Ms. Ackerman. Do I have a second? Second. A second uh, by Mr. Cole. Uh, Jason and Kimberly Beans own the property located directly to the south of the Lily and Dells property, which is 718 Mount Road. During the heavy rains of May, the eastern 50 their property collapsed and deposited fill material construction debris into the lake. Fortunately, no one was injured, but the slope needs immediate uh, attention and debris continues to drift towards and into the Lake Bluff Park District swimming beach area. Beans have applied for emergency permits from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, and the village to complete the necessary erosion control and slope stabilization activities. Additionally, the beans have been requested to be allowed to utilize village-owned Lily and Dell's property to facilitate the completion of the improvements. We anticipate that there will be a large construction vehicles transporting stone and fill to the lakefront in two phases, stabilize the cleanup, followed by establishing the new slope, which should take about nine months to complete. To that end, the village attorney prepared a license <coughs> to allow beans temporary use Lillian Dales provided that they satisfy the following. One, provide for safe egress and ingress along North Avenue and Maple Avenue during construction. Protect and restore the ravine and any damaged infrastructure due to their improvement activity post, uh, and post a $50,000 security. Improve the Lillian Dells Drive to help ensure its intended use as a scenic lake access. Keep the village whole by providing the right to a pedestrian easement from the Dell South towards the Park District Beach. While village staff and the Beans have continued discussions since this request was presented and discussed by the village board at the September 25th, 2020 uh, meeting, an agreement has not been reached and the Beans have made it clear that they are not willing to provide a pedestrian easement across their property. It is anticipated that staff will give an update regarding this progress of the discussions and the Board of Trustees will discuss the necessity of an e easement as a condition of the license agreement uh, along with perhaps other things. Okay. Um, at this point, Drew, I'm going to turn this over to you. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I was hoping I th at this meeting to give um, more information with regards to, um, and, and, and I guess information with specificity as to what the final product of a, uh, the Lillian Dell may look like improved. Um, and unfortunately, I, the information, uh, I, I think I, it's come in very late and I don't know, the village engineer have not even had a chance to talk about it or discuss what it is, but it's a preliminary conversation he has had with Hay and Associates, an engineering firm the village is engaged to help come up with the specification um, to which um, the village board may aspire Lillian Dell to be uh, improved too. Um, but that information is still, uh, I, again, I have not a chance to review that at, at all. Um, so unfortunately, I guess the information is still incomplete in that regard. Um, I guess I could underscore the idea that's in the memorandum that the um, beans are not um, interested in um, providing uh, an easement along their property. Um, at this point, and again, the concept was to make the village whole with regards to the existing property that the village has that um, runs through the Dell and then southward, um, and it's presently underwater, under Lake um, Michigan. Um, 
and I guess the only other piece of information I would add that's uh, new is um, that this Thursday evening we have scheduled a neighborhood meeting to talk about the project and we've uh, we've treated the Lillian Dell and the Beans property like a uh, if it was undergoing a zoning uh, um, request so we've, we've notified all the neighbors within 300 feet of that site and um, we'll be hosting a, a zoom meeting like this with the neighborhood on Thursday evening so um, maybe have some more information there as well but um, that would be the extent of the update certainly if the board is welcome to, con to discuss this matter I believe mr. beans is on the call if there is um, more information he would wish to provide um, for the board to consider um, and that's where I would leave it thank you uh, uh does Mr. Bean have anything he would like to add to this? He is raising his hand. Okay. I'm unmuting. Um, yeah, no, so the, the, the easement, the only, the only thing I would ask or, or question is the making the village whole on the easement. Um, you know, originally we thought it was uh, just to, to uh, put an easement for the land that was coming out of the water that was marked as, as village land, which went about halfway across our property. Um, it's not that it's basically confiscating the whole waterfront and the whole value of, of the project. I mean, the land itself. Um, so, you know, looking at valuations, it would crush our, our property value. And, and if you know anything about Lillian Dells, um, I've never gone in my backyard, uh, on a Friday or Saturday night or Thursday during the summer and not had noise from, from teenagers or, or a party down at the edge of the block. It's, it's incredibly, um, non-soothing i don't know what else to put it's very frustrating so um it's it's not something we want to encourage in any way shape or form or can it's it's, it's a deal killer from my perspective so if that if that precludes the, the project then then you know we'll have to uh, explore other means but we didn't realize we were talking about the, the confiscation of, of the uh of the, our backyard basically so um that you know if you guys have any questions for me on that please feel free to fire away uh, Jason, you, you mentioned um, other means. I know we talked a little bit uh, at the last meeting. Um, what are those other means that, that are possibilities other than I, using I Lillian Dell? I honestly don't think there are any that can be done before the winter. So it's, it's a roll of the dice to, to see if more of the block collapses. I measured today, it's about 25 feet to, to the back deck. Um, you know, the, the, the main option really is to, you know, the barges are built up. On, on look for barges and stuff to see if we can get it by the spring. I mean, they're booked up for two years. Um, there may be options, but but independent of that, it's really just coming down our driveway the way they did originally. And, um, you know, it just makes the project longer because it's much, much, much tighter and much steeper. So they, they can't get the trucks in and out as quickly. So that's what our engineer says. Okay, thank you. Is there any way for the village to help um, the, the beans with um, securing barges, um, Drew? So, um, Jeff, the village engineer, Jeff Hansen, I did reach out to um, one barge company who suggested we reach out to another. The first barge company we spoke with was um, said they did have some availability yet this year, but for a job of this scope, they were reluctant to commit and, and really said it was highly unlikely they would be able to do it. Didn't want to say absolutely no, but they are doing some work in the area. They suggested another barge um, company out of Milwaukee that they thought would, pro would have a, a, um, a more loose schedule um, and, and could have some availability, but um, I, I guess I would maybe be hesitant to recommend that the village take on this activity on behalf of the property owners. But um, I, I think there's the possibility exists as uh, Jason just commented, it, it may not be their preferred contractor who could be available within the time frame that they want to get their work done. Um, and I certainly understand that where the village has better experiences with, with certain contractors than others. So. Yeah, and I'm open. If you have any uh, of those uh, that information, that'd be great because I've only been told what I've been told by by our, our uh, engineers and contractors. So mm -hmm. I'd love to look at. It. I appreciate it. Sure. So, so out of curiosity, the the you know when we do the the ravine and, and build the road, and the expectation was to leave it in a much much better state. Is that a benefit to to the village, or is that considered a detriment? Um, I mean, do we know? 
I'm, I'm happy to answer on behalf of the board. I think the board has viewed it to date as if, if that Lindell can be improved and, and go more towards the idea of the pleasure drive that it, it, it intends to be, I think the answer is yes. I think your project stands a good chance of improving it. Um, I think the risk and the worry is that that investment that you would make to serve your, your needs to do your work could get washed away if not certain improvements are done to secure them, whether it be through little check dams and pipes or another uh, system. Again, that, that final state and what that looks like has yet to be confirmed, and I think that's part of the rub with getting this conversation finalized. But um, I think that's probably the best answer is yes, Jason. I think people do view that as the potential to improve that. Um, I think that the goal would just be make sure it stayed and not get washed out in a storm event. Makes sense. I mean, the, the, um, you know, the improvement to that area, we had talked to our engineers and I said, and I forget the exact term, but, but for lack of a better term, you know, having little backslopes that act as a dam to slow water um, and a few other designs could really make a massive difference in reducing erosion down that ravine. And that, that to me makes complete sense to do at the exact same time we're doing this. So, um, yeah, we'll, I'll look forward to seeing that report and, and um, I, I haven't seen it either. Mm -hmm. I, I just have a question about the um, the easement. Maybe true. Maybe you could help on this. So if we did improvements down there and we um, cleaned up that area down by Lily and Dell and kind of cleaned up that part of the beach, uh, would the park district then uh, would that be an access point? So the park district would be manning that up by the road. I'm just trying to think because Jason brought up something really interesting about how that's um, a loud area down there and it creates um, disturbances for them. I'm just wondering if we clean it up and we monitor a little bit more up at the street, if that would actually benefit the beans from the fact that it would make that part of the beach quieter actually, because it would be a little bit, if there, there'd be monitoring of it. And if people are walking through the, the, um, the area in their yard to get to other parts of the public beach, uh, if the expectation is they're just walking, they're not stopping there to move to North Beach or South Beach or the Dog Beach or what have you. I'm just I'm trying to look at it from a different angle, I guess. I also remember uh, Lillian Dells goes back to the 1870s as a pleasure driveway, and the entire beachfront was totally connected. In fact, they used to bring carriages down Lillian Dells to the beach there. Yeah, uh, actually, when I looked at the history, it ended halfway at our yard, exactly as it does today. So I, I, I mean, maybe, but that was the easement portion. I don't know if there was a park portion that was separate. Well, there was. There was no park at that time. It just, yeah. and we have pictures that show it going all the way down. Because yeah, it said 140 feet, which is pretty much or 150 in the historical records. That's pretty oh. much exactly where it ends right now. So. Well, yeah, it ends. But but you have to understand that. Um, about 12, 15 years ago, your piece in front that, that is now your beach was actually owned by the park district who sold it, who to your whoever developed originally uh, built the house and developed that. Because that originally was a continuous strip all the way from Lily and Dells down to throughout the beach. Yeah, uh, that was the original idea. And then the park district uh, sold that piece. Not sure why. Trust, uh, trustee so, Marquis, your question, uh, I thought, if it's all right, Madam President. Go ahead. So the question, uh, if I understood, or the point. So I, I think the, the operational um, plans for that have not been discussed, right? This is still an idea, and at some point, maybe this would come to fruition. Um, and perhaps at that time, there'd be, you know, drones or robots providing that service. <laughs> but uh, for the for the near for the near term, um, I think we viewed it similarly in that um, I, I draw the parallel to the village's train station parking lot when um, after the village removed the buckthorn that had grown up and was hiding uh, the parking lot from Sheridan Road um, and also added lighting that I would say 99 and a half percent of the problems that occurred in that train station parking lot um, after dark went away. So the idea of daylighting and opening up the space um, and may not leaving it a dead end, you know, like it is today, Lillian Dells, um, it would probably change for the better in terms of being more, much more um, 
um, active. And it, then at that point, it would just be a bend in the pathway or, or, or you know, active trail versus a dead end space where it's difficult to reach. I have a comment and a question. Um, I'm, I think it's really Im imperative that um, we come to an understanding of what the outcome of Lillian Dell's um, drive will end up being um, in terms of the level of improvement. Is it anything from a 12 inch riprap to you know, a, a sculptured, sculptured walk. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not suggesting it would be a sculptured walk, only drawing, only drawing, pointing out the, the need to draw and draft up the parameters. I think this is critical for both the village and the Bean family um, in order that we can describe what the outcome should be figure out what the cost would then be, figure out what the resilience of that structure would be to the weather uh, and stormwater and, and, and use and so forth. Um, the other question I have is, is just to make sure that I understand the, the question on the easement. Um, as the beams um, improve the base of the bluff, my understanding is that that raises the surface of the will raise the surface of the uh, uh, of the base. Uh, I'm not sure of, of another word to use. That it, it raises the surface of the base. Does it is it raising it up above the water line, and is it is it by design to begin with? Is it extending out to and to include, typically include, the the village easement? What do we have? An, do we have an understanding of how that will be left? Which is, the, and I guess the end game here is, so by design, in order to effectively pr protect the bean property, will we be elevating the surface of the village's easement anyway? Recognizing, of course that the water right now is at a near all time high and that the uh, mean or median level of the lake will be significantly lower. We would anticipate it would be dropping. It's already dropping some, but we would, over time, we would expect it to drop some more. And in the, uh, whatever the surface is, the protective surface is down there is per likely to stand further proud of where it would be um, in the, uh, three to nine months that we're making the improvements down there and substantiating, uh, making their their bluff more substantial. So, um, uh, real quick, so to describe it, easement means um, you can't have an easement on your own property. So there's a portion that, that wraps around that currently is underwater. Technically, the village is supposed to have maintained as a gift um, and, and it, or else it reverts to landowner, but we're not disputing that right now. When the build comes, it comes out of the water. The village doesn't need any easement for that land. Easement means taking the property of, of someone else. So that would mean our, we would build the water out of the land on the portion that I just found out that the, the park district sold to our developers, um, that we own the portion that would be the waterfront. And after paying for it in our property purchase, we'd then be gifting it back to the, the town or, or, you know, a, to, to make a path on that portion. So yeah. you don't need an easement on the portion that comes out of the water. That becomes yours automatically or the town's automatically. And there's actually yeah. land in front of that that's another property owner that will come out of the water. And by the way, we've moved in at historically low levels. They were all underwater when we moved in. So, uh -huh. you know, they, okay. they lost for life until this project. Yeah. So so help me help me fully get my head wrapped around this. When, when you're through with the project, um, will the improvements extend out to include the village's easement? Yes. So I think Drew just put a picture on the screen. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, um, Jeff Hansen, would you please describe this and answer Trustee Dewart's question? 
Yeah, so the, um, the, the purple area is the village property. Um, um, Mr. Bean just said, you know, it has always been um, under the water. Look at the existing topography. It looks like it's close to 580, 580, maybe 579 in some areas, which is, you know, um, low water that should be exposed, um, lower water. So right now, you know, it's in the water. And if you look down um, at the green area, that's the area that's right now in the lake um, beyond the, you know, the easternmost property that will come out of the water. So the area that Drew is looking at right now uh, with his cursor will be elevation 590, which is um, about six feet above the water right now and eight and a half feet over what's considered normal high water elevation. And then it'll go up at a two to one slope up to the top of the bluff. So that purple area will be probably 20 feet out of the water. Wow. And at a very steep side slope. So it will be wow. okay. kind of in the middle of the bluff, basically. Okay. Yeah, I, my, my, my purpose in asking was just to make sure that I understood, or we all understand, um, uh, where the easement lies and, and in the course of this restoration, would the easement be above water or below water or something like that? Um, yeah, and, and Mark, you know, that, that area is not an easement, that's property we own, um, okay. that's our property. And it should be noted that whether or not they use Lillian Dell to do um, access it, they're still gonna be working on village property and we still have to have some kind of agreement with them to do that. Okay. Yeah, the, the orange property is, is uh, uh, what is it, 665 Maple, as you can see on the side there. So that is a, another landowner on the other side of the ravine that was, I guess, part of the original agreement. Um, and then the easement is further down where there's the white. Um, uh -huh. That's the part that, there, that needs the easement to continue the purple across the yard. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. It... it we, we disc we've discussed this in the past, Ms. Mr. Bean, and I just wanted to make sure that we all understood this is a great graphic and helps to really clarify um, what we're talking about here. So thanks for helping us, and, and Jeff, thank you to, for helping us too. Oh. Oh, thank you for asking. Sure. So if it's okay oh, with uh, the board, we go ahead. I'd just like to make a comment on Mark's first point about the expectations. Um, you know, in, in the there's there's a big range of leaving Lillian Dell Trail improved, right? We some could say it's improved for drainage, some could say it's improved for pedestrian access, but I think we do need to have a bit more um, definitive uh, expectation of, of what that's going to be. So I think some sort of plan would, would help both both sides, both the beans and the village, just so that we know um, they they know what the potential cost might be and and we know what to expect in the end. So I think that needs to be ironed out um, quite a bit more and, and hopefully what Drew received this afternoon might might do a little bit of that. I, I, I really think that's fair for both parties and and you know, and I'm concerned, I'll, personally, I'm concerned about the resilience of the improvements to, to stormwater, to lake storms, um, all of that kind of thing, um, uh, because I think it's in the village's best interest that we be able to maintain whatever it is we put down there. Um, when you walk down there, um, you can you can certainly see that we've made a number of attempts to try to stabilize that some better some some not so good and um, if we're going to do it we should be wanting to do it correctly drew, drew who would be who would be managing that um, restoration project on the Lillian Dell would that be us or would it be the beans would they be using their engine the beans contractor would build it I guess under the terms that we've in, uh, imagined thus far and that the village would inspect it. Uh, Drew, I think some other information that would be very helpful as we all try to understand and ultimately reach a decision and hopefully uh, an agreement here ultimately, 
that has not been mentioned is I, I understand that to accomplish this project over Lillian Dell, there would literally be hundreds of truck trips um, of some parameter that would need to be made. And I, at least for the next time we discuss this, would like to have some information as to the impact that that would have on our infrastructure, including the roads that lead up to Lillian Dell. Um, to have some idea of how that fits in with the use that they, for example, normally would get probably and frequently from moving trucks versus what the implication is for these trucks full of stone going over our roads and indeed doing so hundreds of times. Um, I'm also, of course, very concerned aside from that potential uh, of damage to our infrastructure from this project. I'm concerned about we have a stormwater pipe that goes down Lillian Dell. Perhaps that will be addressed, strengthened, but I certainly at a minimum would want to see that it is protected as part of this. Um, we have other impacts on the neighbors. Probably this will be something that gets addressed on Thursday, but certainly with hundreds of truck trips, we have issues of congestion, noise, and smell. I'd like to have some, um, you know, some idea about that because while certainly I think we all very much want to uh, both sympathize and you know help the beans as much as possible. We also have our duty, um, you know, more generally to the public. And I think these are all pieces of data that go into that decision making. That certainly I'd like to be cognizant of as we're considering how this all fits together. Because the cost to the village um, could have some parameters out of that that we need to understand. I had a comment uh, about the uh, easement. Um, there's the, the uh, pedestrian easement that has been um, an issue that has been talked about briefly. But when we looked at the graphic for um, the land after all these improvements are made, it almost seems, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it almost seems like we are going to be having land visible even at this current lake level that was underwater and a significant amount in that it looks like there there is a path there will be a path that will be above even the high level of water right now is that a true statement it is um i, I think the difference is how traversable it is right that the size and okay. stone that they're going to install is uh, critical, and I'm, and, and I'm getting out of my, certainly way out of my expertise. Jeff, do you want to talk about this? You know, can I, can I just mention one thing, Drew? Um, I, I just want to mention there's two types of traversable legally and, and practically, and I just, I, I think it hasn't been mentioned that below the mean high water mark of Lake Michigan is legally trans, trans, traversable land as part of Lake Michigan, even if it's showing within the boundaries of a lot. So by raising water above the mean high water level, you're making a, a legal change in what in what property can be traversed there. And, and the plateau is proposed to be above the mean high water level. So it's out of the legally traversable land if it's showing as part of someone else's property. Could you say that again? I mean, I, I almost got that. So, <laughs> so below, below the mean high water mark, it's considered part of the navigable part of Lake Michigan. So whether it's dry or wet, whether you get your feet wet or not, you can walk on it, depending on the lake level. Some years you may get your feet wet, some years you might not, but you can go up to that level, you can walk on it because it's considered navigating Lake Michigan. So when you change the level of the land, you're changing what area can legally be walked on. So as you see where the end of the purple is, the end of our property, that affects people's ability to continue walking because if that's raised out of the lake yeah. Michigan above the mean high water level, then they can no longer legally walk outside of that. I mean, just I was underwater, just so you know, it's at three feet below historic when we moved in. So it's, 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 it's not at the mean high water mark. Um, you know, you could probably walk it ankle deep at that time, but the but the metal barriers in front of our yard were underwater or at the edge of the water when, when it was in. And now they're now they're three feet up on them. But I, was, I, I was able to walk around in 2015 without getting my feet wet. Make, made the whole trip around. Yeah, no, but that I think that was still 
I think that was still ours or the uh, the, the 665 property. I could be wrong. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. So when I look at the when I look at the graphic that's up and I see what looks like you know if I had a little truck and I wanted to just kind of go along that path, that is that is what was historically traversable in the Wayback Machine, you know, when people took their little carriages down, and that's kind of just a recreation of the historical connection then between the Lillian Dells, and um, it, it's, it's that path, but it's obviously built up to be higher than the water. Is that right? Is that really kind of a I think um, your first question, you know, when they're done here, if you follow that purple from the top of the screen going down, you know, there's that um, dimension where you see 10 feet and the arrow on each side kind of, kind of towards the top. Yeah. You know, that is a, uh, a flat area. Yeah. You see how as you go down, the purple kind of goes off that flat area. Right. There. And then you're on a very steep, just large rock slope that you can't walk. I see. And then as you head um, around the corner, you go back past the flat spot. Um, and then you're on a slope that is two to one, which is... Uh, that means two feet over for every one foot down. Um, right. That's not a very easily walkable slope. Right. And and then you kind of these dead ends into um, you know where, where it stops. So it it isn't going to be walkable on the purple um, in any real practical way when they're done. Okay. So um, I guess the reason I'm asking all of this is because it seems like there's going to be a lot of new land. There's going to be a lot of new something. And um, the, the issue has been brought up about, well, hey, we could connect the Lillian Dell to pieces that are further south that are part of the park district to make the village whole again. But when we say make the village whole again, the sale of that land to the developer and subsequently to the beans eventually we can't we can't make that we, we really can't consider making ourselves whole with respect to that unless it's sold to us i mean w when we make that statement making us whole again i don't think i don't think that what the beans are doing or what the beans are asking for is taking away from what the village has at all it's saying we want to keep it the way it is which is the way what the way it was when we bought it so I guess I just, when I look at that statement about making the village whole again, I don't think it really, it would apply if we wanted to make it whole back to 19 whatever. But um, the connection to the Park District Beach really can't, really can't be done unless the beans grant us an easement. And I'm not a, a lawyer, but an easement doesn't change ownership. An easement just changes permission to use on a limited level within certain parameters. So we're not, when we're asking for an easement, the beans are asking for an easement to use what the village owns, which is all that purple, so they can bring their trucks down. And the village, in theory, would be asking the beans permission to have access to connect Lillian Dells to the South Beach. It's not, a, it's not taking it, it's just asking for permission for that for that use correct correct it is the, the difference i mean just just technically it's a temporary easement for a permanent easement and the permanent easement because of the way it was written has lights paths fencing. intrusion fencing we basically lose our water for, so we lose it so it in my mind it replaces eminent domain it's been confiscated but it's not re, re you know confiscate confiscate confiscated without being compensated for as you said so it's, I, I, you know, permanent easement, it's just, it's pretty, um, it basically eliminates that, that from ever being a value of our land. Yeah. Well, you still have the proximate use, which is unique to your location. Um, but I, I, to me, having that pedestrian easement is not, um, it's not a deal uh, it's not a deal breaker. I, I, I guess I just wanted to have all the facts and understand it. I, I, I don't think that we can make a good decision until we have all the facts. Um, but um, I'm just trying to understand, have everybody understand what that easement really means. It's not a taking of the land. It's a, a permission to use it. 
Peter, could you and, talk and, a little bit uh, about, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I think I'm gonna ask the same question you are, which is uh, how, how the easement actually works. My understanding would be that people could move through that easement, but they couldn't necessarily put down a blanket and have a picnic there that they would just be utilizing it to move from one point to another because technically this would be the beans beach and people would be moving through it to get to <coughs> part of our public beach but we but people wouldn't be like putting down a blanket spreading out for the day in this area of the beach they would just be allowed to access it to get from one point to another am i wrong in that peter no that's I generally correct i mean i mean that's generally correct. I mean, we have not had any, we prepared the, the document, which is called the Pedestrian Access and Pathway Easement Agreement. It is a non-exclusive easement, so it doesn't prevent um, the property owner from continuing to use the property. They just have to be, it can't be inconsistent with our use. Um, but we haven't gotten into any serious type of negotiation over the specifics of the easement to deal with kind of issue you're raising and whether or not we could. Um, but the document as written is a non-exclusive pathway and pedestrian access easement. If possible, so, and lighting. Yeah, no, the phrasing said yeah. we couldn't block, like it could be, it was designed for a road the way it's worked to block us off from the access. So I, I've, the whole conversation has been about building a pathway and basically, I guess we could hop the fence, you know, get down there, but it, it wasn't worded as a, Occasionally, a neighbor goes across, which isn't going to be a big deal to us at all, anyway. So, um, and I'm, and I'm I'm just confused as to if you get to the other side, it's all it's all revetment. There's no there's no path there for another couple hundred feet before you hit the dog park. So I'm not quite sure. It, it doesn't. It's not like it magically opens up in the dog park and and there's a beautiful connection. So I'm not given the the restoration that's already been done there. So I'm not. I, I don't think it's what people are imagining it's going to be without a significant amount of work by the park district. Well, and I, I think uh, that's kind of the idea is that this could be a, a future project mm -hmm. for, um, you know, 10, 15, 20, however many, however long from now, um, but it would just give the, the ability to do that. Um, I, I'd like to chime in and, and agree with Barbara. Um, I mean, it is unfortunate that the park district sold that the rights to to that piece of property, but that is in the past. Um, and we can't say that the village needs to be made whole by, by requiring access to that, in my opinion. My <clears throat> bigger concern is making sure that the Lillian Dell is restored to uh, an appropriate condition that, that helps to um, keep whatever enhancements are there. In addition, uh, I appreciate Bill Bill's comments about the roads. Those are gonna be heavily used during the project. So I'd like the village protected in some way um, so that the village is not on the hook for significant uh, repairs sooner rather um, than, than on the normal schedule. So um, I'm of the opinion that I think we can make this agreement, but we just need to iron out the details of the enhancement and also um, do the study on, on, the, on the road use. I'd like to support also what um, Trustee Toll was mentioning and also supporting what Trustee Meyer was saying where I used to live a couple of blocks away from that opening on North Avenue and I used to be able to walk down uh, Lillian Dells with my dog. And I know that path very well and I know the condition of the, 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 the pipe leading to the, the, the lake. Um, the, I'm very sensitive to what the village would incur with um, hundreds of trucks on the streets. There will be a cost to the village and to the rest of the community. There will be a cost to Lillian Dells, to the condition it is today and what it will be tomorrow. But I would like also to support the, the family. I mean, that I have sailed past that property and I've seen piling for that house in the open. And I've seen that, I mean, I would be in the position of a bean family. I would have urgency to resolve that situation. So from our standpoint, from the village, uh, trustee standpoint and to be the, the administration of a village, I would really put an urgency to finding a solution. The village will have a cost. The Bean family has a cost too, and this is really unfortunate what's happening, and I'm concerned for them. 
okay? Even for we, we trustee have an obligation to do best for the community, we also, I feel for the, 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 the beans. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the comments. I just, just I, I do, Andrew, you can you chime in. I know that, that there were some conversations with our engineers about the road, um, the conversation on the pipe and the infrastructure and, and, and you know, bond to put up and, and we own any of the, the damage. I believe that'll all be part of the agreement. And, and that's rational. Any damage we do to, to the infrastructure needs to be made whole. Um, you know, the, the improving the ravine, agree. Uh, we just need, for both of us, the scope of it. Um, and that I think is complete agreement. So I do think everything you guys are bringing up is, is accurate for the village as a whole uh, and, and, and very rational and, and um, you know, stuff we can work through. So I appreciate it. Any other comments? There was a Will question we asked. Oh, the, uh, wait, uh, yeah. right. Will we be publicizing, Will we be publicizing the, um, and how will we publicize uh, the Zoom meeting on Thursday. Um, we deliver notice to those properties within 300 feet. Okay. And they've already received it. We've gotten a couple emails and some phone calls. So. Perfect. Okay. There was a question asked on Q and A, and I was trying to respond to the question that was asked um, regarding this. Uh, Village board item. And the question is, how is the existing easement written? Question mark. That takes forbearance. Uh, the the answer is there's no existing easement today. The village is seeking an easement. So just wanted to clarify that. But I will. I, I, the only comment I would make, President O'Hara, is that you know I, I think I commented this the last time this was here. Typically, it is not. We don't look to negotiate agreements in an open meeting <laughs> and we, we don't we usually bring matters like this but this is being expedited given the concerns of the property owners and trying to work through this and it's been uh, evolving on a daily basis like I said the you know the information coming from the engineers tonight haven't had a chance to review it yet but um, certainly appreciate your patience with this and hopefully we can have this wrapped up by the next meeting okay are there any other uh, questions or any comments from the trustee any procedural things that we need to be able to continue this to our next uh, session? I think the village president can just um, declare that without object, um, without um, objection, it'll be um, deferred to the next regular board meeting. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what I would which plan is, to do. Is, and hopefully uh, between now and the next board meeting with the meeting on Thursday night with the uh, neighbors, and with continued discussions uh, with the administration and, and the beans, uh, we can get resolution on this to bring back uh, in two weeks to us. Um, everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We will defer uh, until two weeks for this. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will now move on to the next item on this uh, agreement, which is um, an ordinance amending a special use permit and granting parking variations for the Center Avenue Partners development. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, this would be, by the way, first reading consideration for this. And do I have a motion, please? So moved. Uh, so moved by Mr. Dewar. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Mr. Charlot. This is the first of several village board items relating to zoning relief application uh, filed by Prairie Perspective LLC, uh, a la Prairie Expresso, to allow their expansion into tenant space addressed at 79 Scranton Avenue, which is approximately six, 768 square feet. In addition to the items on Monday's agenda, Prairie Expresso would require an amendment to their license agreement for the use of village property to add outdoor seating, which would be prepared by staff for consideration at the board's October 12th meeting. Prairie Expresso would also require sign and site plan approval at a later date for their proposed exterior alteration. This zoning relief, if granted, would allow Prairie Expresso to accommodate indoor customer seating and offer additional food and beverage options. 
the new and existing tenant spaces would have an interior service hallway for employees, but customers would reach the property through two separate entrances. The petitioner has indicated they would operate the pedestrian alley only seasonally following their expansion. Allowing the expansion would require approval of a special use permit and parking variations would take the form of an amendment to ordinance 2020-13, which governs the various special uses and variations on the property, which includes Prairie Expresso. At the conclusion of its public hearing on September 16th, to consider the application, the PCZBA unanimously recommended the village board or approve the requested relief with the condition that the hours of operation be limited such that the walkaway restaurant continues to close at 10 p.m. daily. Except on Saturday, the rest restaurant may operate only between 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. On Saturday, the restaurant may operate only between 7 a.m. and midnight. In addition, the other conditions applicable to Prairie Express of today, such as the requirements that employees park in the train station parking lot, would continue to apply. Mm -hmm. Members of the CCPA emphasize various concerns expressed in testimony regarding parking in a central business district. Okay. Um, all right. Did I get a first or second? I'm sorry on that. You did. You did. Yeah, that's what I thought I did. All right. Let's open that up uh, for comments, questions for the board members. Is there anybody in the, in the audience that wishes to speak first? Let me ask that. Madam President, you have the, the yeah, you have the petitioner and their architect and the landlord all present. Do they wish to speak? Um, I would, I'm, hi, this is Matthew Kerouac, the architect. I would, um, I think the summary was pretty clear. I would wait to see if there's any questions from the board before, um, and before I spoke. Okay, Matt, thank you. Board, open for comments, discussion, questions. Okay, not hearing any. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? I already had the motion to approve that. Excuse me, first reading. Sorry about that. I'm fixated on this tonight. All right. Um, then we have a roll call vote, please. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Sherlock. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Marquis. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Tolf. Aye. Okay. All right. That's first reading, and the second reading will be uh, in two weeks. Ordinance amending Lake Bluff zoning regulations relating to subterranean garages. I understand uh, that uh, the petitioner has withdrawn the request. Is that correct, Drew? That is correct. Earlier today, um, I heard from Jamie Sickles, the petitioner, and she did decide to um, withdraw her, app her application and request for zoning relief in this regard. Um, which really leaves one issue for the village board to um, decide on. And if you recall at the last meeting, there was a uh, first reading approval of the text amendment dealing with how the village's regulations worked um, with regards to um, um, uh, number of doors and, and so far. Uh, hold on one second. We'll check something. Okay, so just to clarify, um, I, I didn't know, if President Hart, you were purposely taking that out of order or if you wanted to go back to item 14? Well, I am taking it out of order. Uh, oh, the liquor license. Sorry about that. I did take that out of order and I'm trying to figure out where I put that. Hold on just a second. Yep. So, in, uh, in the interest of expedience, could we just go ahead and, and, and wrap yeah. this since we've already got a... Yeah, yes, yes, Mark, yeah. we're going to do that, okay? Yeah. All right, yes, so Drew, let's finish your discussion there and I will find the piece of paper I'm looking for. Yeah, so um, I'm sure the minutes will reflect that there's no objection to taking those out of order. <laughs> and so the idea of... Yeah, so that left the question of the um, amendments um, regarding um, uh, the subterranean garages and again, th that the village board did a first reading approval of those text amendments. 
And so perhaps uh, given the um, Village Board's uh, concerns with this project and looking at the history, perhaps the Village Board uh, would, would rather send this text amendment back to the PCZBA to consider whether or not to allow um, subterranean garages at all or maybe under those con re reassess those conditions. I think that sounds like a reasonable thing to do, mm -hmm. to ask them to, to look at that again. I would definitely second that, uh, given the history of a few houses, a couple of houses. I know in Lake Bluff that had significant issues with garages underground. And, uh, I'll come down in the same place here on that because um, I think as I announced last time or voiced last time with this, I have a lot of concerns about having cars in basements. Um, and I won't repeat myself from that, but. Drew, I would, if we're gonna send it back down, I would suggest that um, we put on the next village board meeting uh, um, that ordinance so that it can be, um, we just don't wanna have the first reading ordinance out there without any action on it. So we can either revoke it or we can deny, vote to deny first reading or second reading approval. Um, we can figure that out. I, I just think we should close the loop on that first reading ordinance if we're gonna send it back for a new public hearing. How about we move then to revoke the, the first reading approval? Well, we can't do that tonight because it's not on the agenda, but we can do that at the it next It is time. on the agenda, Peter. Oh. Peter, that ordinance is on well, the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was the zoning relief. Yeah, so we can do that tonight. I apologize. All right. So what uh, what's the format that we want to use? What's the procedure here? Do we? Uh, Bill, you can make you can make a motion to deny second reading approval. And at the uh, same time, can you refer right. it to back to the PCBA, Peter, in the same motion? Correct. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. So we're clear. Move to uh, deny second reading approval and move to refer back to PCBA on the basis we've discussed. And second on that. That's a roll call vote. Okay, Trustee Charlo. Aye. Trustee Dewar. Aye. Trustee Marquis. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Okay. Be it on that. All right, we have number 14, which I found, all right, which is an ordinance amending Title Three of the Village of Lake Bluff Municipal Code and the comprehensive fee schedule concerning liquor licenses. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved. Okay, uh, so moved by uh, Ms. McKee, second by Mr. Tolo. Uh, Tolo. Oh. This, again, is first. Oh. So, Mr. Tolo. Oh, I'm sorry, our first reading consideration. This is the second of two board items related to a pending zoning relief application filed by Prairie Prospective LLC, alias Prairie Expresso. The attached ordinance recommended by the Liquor Commissioner proposes the following changes to the village's liquor regulations. Expands the Prairie Expresso Class U license into their new tenant space and increases the fee associated with the Class U license accordingly. Expands Innovasi Restaurant LLC's off-premise retail sales license to include liquor in addition to uh, wine and beer. Any comments or questions um, from the board? Hearing none. May we have a roll call, please? Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Markey. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Sherla. Aye. All right. We now have an ordinance granting a special use permit site plan approval and variations for an automobile dealership. Okay. Sorry on my little thing here seems to I haven't lost that Drew, do you have that on your thing there 
The Jaguar dealership? Do you have a uh, the, the reading on there? I have um, seen not to have that at the moment. I, thought I, I do. Did. I'm happy to read the cover if you'd like. Uh, would you please, in your lovely tone, thank you. Well, I'm sorry. I can't deliver on that. But. Actually, here I, you know, <laughs> Are you here, actually, I found it. I'm sorry. Oh, I found it. Thank great. <laughs> I, yeah. Yes, great. Okay. All right. Here we go. Excuse me. My lovely iPad is causing huge problems, but it's probably me. Okay. This is an ordinance granting a special use permit, site brand approval, and variations for an automobile dealership which is Imperial Motors at 3947 Sherwood Terrace. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by Mr. Meyer. Do I have a second? Second. A uh, second by Mr. Dewart. So again, this would be a first reading consideration. On February 6, 2020, the Village of Lake Bluff received an application from Green Bay Properties, LLC, for a special use permit and variations necessary to develop the subject property at a new automobile automobile automotive dealership petitioner is also the operator of imperial motors jaguar located nearby and intends to relocate that dealership to this property this would allow their existing dealership to be repurposed by a new dealership or other tenant in total this application requires site plan review a special use permit for a new automobile dealership and variations concerning the location of parking and loading zone the architectural board of review reviewed the proposed site plan on march 3rd and recommended approval subject to the following conditions one install the strip windows on the west side elevation with a sunshade over the windows Max, maintain the exterior lighting at a color temperature of 4,000 degrees Kelvin. Combine the entry and welcome sign with the directional sign at the entrance of 41. Review the garbage enclosure to uh, revise the garden enclosure to horizontal cedar painted or stained to match the building. Uh, Thereafter, public meeting was suspended due to the COVID-19 pandemic. During this period, the Illinois Department of Transportation notified the applicant that it would refuse access for a right-in, right-out access to the property from Route 41. The applicant does intend to continue to seek Route 41 access from IDOT. At the applicant's request, the PCZBA considered requesting uh, zoning relief during a public hearing on September 16th. PCZBA unanimously recommended approval of the application as originally submitted, and that would be with Route 41 access, or under an alternate site plan that eliminates the Route 41 access. The only recommended condition of approval was a series of conditions designed to prevent car deliveries from taking place on the shoulder of Route 41. After first reading, the ABR will conduct a second public hearing at their October 6th meeting to consider the site plan variations without Route 41 access. The board, uh, excuse me, the board may provide first reading approval pending this hearing to avoid any delay to the applicant. An updated ordinance reflecting the ABR's October 6th deliberations will be prepared for second reading and approval on October 12th. Are there any questions, comments from the trustees regarding this? Drew, did you have anything you wanted to add um, with this? I, I would just let you know that, um, Madam President, that uh, the dealership owner-operator, uh, Jordan Aaron, is on the line, as is his project uh, Advisee, uh, advisor Robert Flubacher. Do they have anything they would like to add to this? All right. No. I have a question, uh, Drew. Do you have an update on the on the IDOT's uh, deliberation on the forty one access? They were, um, well, beyond the original denial, I've been trying to get a meeting with the District 1 engineer, and I was, um, he was supposed to call me last week, and we did not connect. So I'm trying to have that conversation this week. Um, presently, I know the Chevy Exchange has a right in, right out onto 41, but the existing dealership for um, 
Jaguar does not. Is that correct? They do. They do. So is there any um, potential conflict with there being, you know, then one more because then the existing dealership would stay? We don't know the, the future tenant at this point, correct? Correct. But the, so then there may be three dealerships in a row with right in, right out access. And that, that was that the concern that in, it was going from two to three dealerships or? I think the general, the, the general, general policy guidance from IDOT is to limit the amount of access uh, sources or points on, mm -hmm. uh, on Route 41. So, so they did not want to have Jaguar or on their new location have an additional curb cut. Is that right? That is correct. Or access it. Yeah. So if, that that is that is the reason for the call. I think the idea is if the village perhaps can potentially persuade IDOT to review their policies in a different manner. Um, so let me. And if and here I'm a little unclear when I read it. If IDOT does not uh, extend that additional in, uh, in and out of 41, what is their what's going to what would they do? Uh, so this is Jordan Aaron. Yeah. Um, good evening, everybody. The so the back when we built the uh, current dealership approximately 20 years ago, um, we, we kind of had the same um, initial turn down by IDOT. And at the time, um, the village also got involved and assisted with, um, you know, the discussions to get a right in, right out. Um, so the, you know, the, the reasoning is it's called a freeway. And they, like Drew mentioned, they, they're not terribly interested in having um, right ins and right outs. Um, over the course of the 20 years we've had this, there have been zero collisions at the site. So we've got a pretty good track record um, of ingress and, and exit. They, you know, the other thing is they say, you know, it's on a curve, whereas the new site, which is slightly south as Drew is driving down the highway there, the forest preserve, there you go, it's actually on a straightaway. So one of their reasons for declining us is that it's on a curve. Well actually gave us a right in right out on a curve and this one is on a straightaway and also the deceleration and acceleration lane would be basically a continuation of our current acceleration lane and then um, the Chevy exchanges deceleration lane so we're not really um, creating um, too much interference uh, if any at all with the right in and right out um, so it's really more of a you know, they, they don't like to give um, deviations from, uh, you know, their, their stated purpose, I guess. So it takes some conversation. So we hope to get it because it's a much better, obviously, when you have all the, the car dealerships on the uh, Route 41 corridor here with canals and with Chevy Exchange and, and us to have the, the right in and right out. Obviously, our, um, our building is actually facing the highway. So having people be able to come in from the, the east side is, is best. Um, and just so you know, the reason why we're building this new building um, is within the dealer agreement of any franchise dealer, the manufacturer basically stipulates what kind of building you have. So uh, the new building is a very contemporary building and would take a huge amount of change to our existing building, which we happen to think is very, very attractive and want to keep it. Um, so that's why we're doing the, uh, the new structure. And I think it'll add a lot to the village. So if we ultimately cannot get it, um, we still need to move forward with the project. So we're hoping that with the, you know, with the village's support, we can get it. It would be best case scenario for us. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, trustees, anything? An ad. So, are we prepared to uh, approve first reading with the 
access question up in the air. We do have, it does, it presupposes, or, or are we prepared to go to a plan B between, that could be very different between first reading and second reading? Um, how do we, I mean, it, I guess that's a comfort factor, I, I suppose. That I'm not sure there's a, a legal thing because we, we know we can amend, but it, it seems to be a, a, a substantial change. Wait. Well, is, is that, I believe he just, didn't Jordan just say that they would be moving ahead with the project? With this project anyway, right? No, no matter what, would the project be significantly different well, with, what would be different the, would be yeah. they would no longer have access to their dealership from 41. It would all be through from Waukegan Road. Uh, confirm, I assume that's that's how you would do it, Jordan, and um, through Sherwood. And, Correct. And, and that, that's it's 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 a different um, concept. And I'm just asking uh, if if that's something that, that's within our comfort zone. So we have on the on this in this packet we have both the the uh, site plan with right in and right out and without, and the reason we need to go back um, on this sixth is because they didn't see it with out the. Um, Bob, correct me. Did they see it within? I think they did see it. No, they did see it within without. Um, but I think there were a couple of additional. Drew, you might have to help me here. Why we're going back on the sixth? Uh, in front of the appearance review and zoning. But they, they've seen both right in, right out, and without, as you see it here today. I don't think they saw both. I think they only saw at the time, they only saw the one. The ZBA, the PCZBA saw both. I'm just looking at the wording in the ordinance and um, wondering um, if there's a way to manage that. If there is a concern about, you know, if there's, uh, my, I suspect that if um, Jordan found out four weeks after he received approval that the state was going to allow it, or if he found out, you know, six months afterwards while he was still under construction, he would want that approach. Um, and so, or that access. Um, You're correct. So if there's a way, Peter Friedman, I'm looking at the ordinance and making sure it covers both. regardless if there's access or not off of 41, if the approval as written covers both and the board is, I guess the board could be. Well, we could make that clear for second reading if it's not. Yeah, and I guess it comes down to the, does the board want to know the final, final, final decision um, or if that can be reported back to you, whatever your pleasure. If, um, if I could, Mr. Irvin. Yeah. Yeah. So we had talked about this with the village attorney. There's a section 6B as in Bravo that speaks to this. Um, so the, the way the ordinance is structured right now is it presumes that the applicants will build their alternative site plan, which is to say they'll build the site plan that does not have 41 access. Um, it provides an administrative pathway, pathway for the village administrator. Um, yeah to approve that curb cut uh, without any further um, action by the Architectural Board of Review, the PCZBA, or the Village Board. Um, that's presuming, you know, the PCZBA has seen both plans and has recommended approval of both. The Architectural Board of Review has seen one and made a positive recommendation and they would have the chance to see and, and make a, a recommendation regarding this alternative plan, the plan without the curb cut uh, next Tuesday, October 6th. Okay. So, board, it boils down to: Are you comfortable that you would like to see this building with or without the curb cut 41? I think it's highly desirable to have the yeah. curb cut, for yeah. sure. I mean, it 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 presents us with a, a whole different set of um, circumstances. I can't think of another word right now. To 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 access our um, automobile dealerships off of Waukegan Road 
with what I would assume to be um, appropriate signage, um, increasing traffic on Sherwood. Um, I, I'm perhaps there's a, a workable, uh, something workable with um, our, our Chevrolet dealership at the same time, uh, but it's different. And, and because it's different, I, ju I just ask the question, are, is that within our comfort zone um, or not? And um, that's all, that's, that's. That's okay, yeah, I, I yeah. understand. So um, the, the question is, is this within your comfort zone board? Are you okay with this? I'm comfortable with it. I would be okay with it. Yeah. Sorry, John. And I'm certainly okay, let's proceed. And I suppose I'll just add this one comment. If you're forced into the situation of no cut on 41 by IDOT, Certainly, at least from my point of view, I would want to do everything within reason to facilitate um, a decent sign that's going to get attention on 43. I think it's important for us to be supporting our car dealers and uh, would certainly want to encourage uh, you finding solutions if IDOT is obstructing you in this way. Uh, I would also add that uh, uh, we will do our utmost as a village to try to persuade IDOT uh, to grant uh, the dealership's request. Uh, don't know how far that will go with IDOT, but we will do whatever we can to uh, find some success with that. Was everybody okay with all this? Um, let's yes, have it support that. Okay. Yeah, I, I have I have one other. Jordan, are you are you comfort? You, you know, I. Automobile de dealerships aren't my business, but ordinarily your showroom, for example, is oriented toward your customer arrival. In this case, your cust if, if, your, if your access is off 43, your, your image to your customer, will their, your, their first impression will be on the service side, will it not to some extent, um, versus the um, the the access off of 41. How will, is there an issue there? There is a little bit. I mean, the front side, you know, the, the face of the highway is a very dramatic um, part of the building. It's it's a structural glass, like a jewel box. So when you drive by, you don't you know, all you see is into the building, especially at night with um, um, you know a lighting scheme that changes through the day and in the evening and then into the night. Um, so, uh, the back of the buildings on the west side of the building, we've tried to make it a, a front rather than a back of a building. So it's got a lot of windows, it's got a lot of definition uh, to, to make a, a nice looking building as you approach uh, from what would be theoretically the back side. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a concern um, because the front is, is really fantastic looking. So. Yeah. <laughs> but it's you know it, you know it's it we went through this 20 years ago and and the village really uh, helped out a lot so I think Drew can make you know connection with with the folks at IDOT um, it'll help yeah them knowing that the village is in support I I certainly hope we can uh, do this one to make it right for you well, thank you yes, I, I really think that's appreciate. that's what we would all like to do and mm -hmm. and we will. Uh, Encourage Drew to use his uh, magic. <laughs> Full agreement, right, supporting so, our. Uh, can we, uh, if uh, <laughs> sure. this is done, can we uh, go for a roll call, please? Trustee Markey. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Sherlow. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Thank you all. We are now doing item number 18, which is an ordinance initiating a review of certain village zoning regulations and directing the village administrator to undertake planning and administrative procedure related thereto. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. I so moved by Ms. Ankerman. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Mr. Meyer. The Lake Club zoning regulations govern the use and development of private property within the village and create specific zoning districts that provide specific and unique regulations for property located in these districts. More specifically, the zoning regulations provide for three different types of planned use development. 
on planned commercial developments, which was adopted in 2013, planned mixed use developments, which was adopted in 2016, and planned residential developments, which were adopted in 1987. Through the flexibility uh, afforded by planned use developments, the village seeks to achieve the specific objectives that are in the best interest of the village, including, but not limited to, stimulating creative approaches to commercial development of land, providing more efficient use of land, preserving natural features, and providing open space areas and recreational areas in excess of those required under standard zoning regulations developing and implementing new approaches to the living environment through a variety of in-type design and layout of buildings, transportation systems, and public facilities, and promoting long-term planning to allow harmonious and compatible land uses or combination of uses with surrounding areas. That was a very long sentence. It is in the best interest of the village to undertake a review of the planned residential development regulations and the underlying zoning district in which planned residential development may be located in order to determine whether and to what extent these regulations should be revised, updated, or replaced in advance of any future developments. If approved, the attached ordinance directs the village administrator to initiate a thorough review of the planned residential development regulations and the underlying zoning districts in which planned residential development may be located. Anybody uh, out there in the audience that wanted to speak to that? Let me see, Madam President, is anybody that's raising their hand? See anybody? Yes. Mr. Rick Lesser. Okay. All right. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, and my, uh, my thanks for you all working this late on this. So here, hold on. I've got a, I've got a weird name on there. That's because I was in Zoom court this morning and I have to... When I'm in Zoom court, I have to meet myself <laughs> after my case. So my my apologies, uh, but uh, I'm not actually 19 CH 893. <laughs> Rick Lesser, 27 West Hawthorne Court. Uh, I just had two uh, points I wanted to add to this discussion uh, and um, uh, and their review. Uh, the first is that the um, zone, the zoning code uh, for the village, in particular section two dash sorry. 10-2-9D4 uh, contains a uh, provision that if there is a zoning change, uh, the neighbors, people uh, owning 20% or more of the neighboring properties, uh, can object to the change, and that would trigger a requirement of a four uh, trustees to vote in favor of it. Uh, and would eliminate the possibility of the village president breaking the tie. We ran into this problem on the Stonebridge uh, project. Uh, on Stonebridge, there were only three trustees who would support it, but because it was a PRD rather than a zoning change, uh, the village ruled that the, um, uh, that the furnished protest right uh, would not apply. These are both land use changes. You can quibble over whether it's a zoning, whether a PRD is a zoning change or is not a zoning change. I get the point there, uh, but just the same, it is a land use change. And one of our the concerns at the time, and one, certainly one of my concerns, is that the PRD can be used as a device to avoid uh, this frontage protest requirement. And I would like the village to consider that uh, when they re-examine the PRDs. My second point is uh, there used to, I believe, also be a limit on the size uh, of a PRD, that is the number of units that would be um, uh, created. Uh, I think that is appropriate uh, in that uh, when you overlay a PRD on a larger area, uh, you can do a lot of damage to the existing zoning and the existing expectations uh, of the people around there. Uh, there is some point to having PRDs limited in size and scope. Um, and I would like the uh, village to consider that limitation as well. Thank you all very much for your, uh, uh, for your attention and, uh, and your participation and, and your service on behalf of the village. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any uh, anyone else? All right. Uh, any comments? I have a qu I have a question to uh, Administrator uh, Irving. What would be the timeline for that review? Um, great question. Um, I, I think I'll have to get back to you on that in terms of laying out a schedule about what that will look like. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Hearing none, uh, can we have a roll call, please? Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Uh, excuse me, before I, I ask something to interrupt there. We're talking a first and second reading approval on this, Art Peter? Yeah, the, you're voting on first reading right now. Okay, fine. Continue on. I'm sorry for the interruption. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Sherlock. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Markey. Aye. All right. Uh, do I have a motion for second reading? So moved. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Dewart. Do I have a second on that one, please? Second. Okay, second by Mr. Meyer. All right. Roll call, please. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Trustee Sherlock. Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Markey. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Thank you. All right. Uh, trustees report. Any trustees this evening? Report on anything? I have a, I have a short report, Madam President. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we already talked about the dogs on the bluff for uh, Lake Bluff 125, but I wanted to just mention to folks that um, starting October 5th, we're going to be installing the brick walkway in front of Village Hall. Um, so if you're up in town and you happen to see uh, some construction going on up there, it's a new walkway that residents helped uh, fund. It was a gift to the village from the 125 committee. Uh, we got about 300 and 30 engraved bricks that are going in and um, it's a nice little beautification project. So uh, that's what's going to be going on up up by Village Hall on October 5th. Uh, thank you, Joy. And by the way, thank you because I think you spearheaded that and made that big push so that we do have 330 bricks <laughs> uh, there. Thank you very much. You're Anything welcome. Else? Anything else? Madam uh, President, uh, Madam President. May I, may I trouble you? Um, given that we occasion, <laughs> given we've always not always, sometimes we've had issues with um, going into closed session and coming back to act on executive session meeting minutes. Um, yes. Might might the board consider that out, take that issue out of order as well? Just in the event that there is a technical issue, we we avoid that coming back into regular session after a closed session. I, I think that would be a wonderful idea myself. Uh, anybody else have any objections to that? All right. Uh, and, I, and if I may, before we go that further, I think in the future, as long as we're meeting mostly virtual, I will move those on the order of the agenda. I think you should, because it yeah. makes it very awkward to, yeah. to do that, to go back and yeah. do that, which we found out. So I think that's a good idea. All right, so uh, let's go in, uh, in consideration of the August 24th, 2020 executive session meeting. Minutes approval, do I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by, uh, excuse me, Ms. Marquis, do I have a second? Second. Uh, second, uh, thank you for Mr. Toll. Any comments, questions regarding that? Hearing none, roll call. You're on mute, Megan. Got it. Trustee Farrellow. <laughs> Aye. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Markey. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trustee Ankerman. Aye. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask for a motion to uh, go into executive session to discuss law enforcement issues. Well, and to clarify that, uh, Madam President, probable yeah. or imminent litigation and security procedures pursuant to 2C11 and 2C8. Gosh, that's not what you told me earlier. I didn't know all that, but that's good. Okay, thank you. All right, hearing that, do I have a motion, please? So moved. So moved by Mr. Stewart. Do I have a second? Second. second. Uh, okay. Uh, second by Ms. Ankerman. Uh, roll call, please. Trustee Dewart. Aye. Trustee Marquis. Aye. Trustee Meyer. Aye. Trustee Toll. Aye. Trust 
Trustee Engman. Aye. Trustee Sherlock. Aye. All right. Do we have a separate uh, Zoom in number for this? Yes, ma'am. For executive session? Yes. Pardon? Yes. yes. Okay. If I can find it, thank you. We will all say adieu and then we will meet up again shortly.